Hello, I'm Kenny Rice. The 1988 Breeders' Crown Series gets underway this Friday night at Saratoga Raceway with the aged horse and gelding trot. And much as it has been all season, the big story is Mac Lobel. Mac has made the headlines all year long, from the announcement of his return to racing to successful tours of the Midwest and East Coast Ovals in preparation for a transatlantic journey. The pint-sized trotting king took on Europe's best in the prestigious Elite Lop in Stockholm, Sweden, winning in grand style and bringing America back to the forefront in the trotting ranks after a 23-year absence. Back in the States, his string of successful efforts was snapped in the second leg of the Statue of Liberty. The victor in that race was Go Get Lost, who also won a leg of the Statue of Liberty in 1987. The speedy Somali performer turned in the fastest mile of his career in the win over Mac, clocking the distance in 154 and 3 fifths. A few weeks later, Go Get Lost and Mac Lobel renewed the rivalry in the Nat Ray at the Meadowlands. This time, Mac got the upper hand, defeating his nemesis by more than three lengths and setting the stage for a showdown in the Breeders' Crown. Mac also has his sights set on a world record that has been untouched for 19 years, the 156 and 4 all-aged world mark for trotters on the half, set by Neville Pride at the very same Saratoga Raceway. Eclipsing that speed mark would make him the fastest trotter of all time on the half, five eighths, and mile racetracks. The field for the Breeders' Crown aged horse and gelding trot includes Natural Image, who will start from the rail. Driven by Steve Condren, he is owned by Sherry Chris, Donald Broderick, and trainer Brad Maxwell. Natural Image is eight to one in the morning line. Number two is Shimitar, a son of Yellow Knife. Dan Ader will drive for trainer Earl Oynes and owner Esther Crownover. Helped by the inside draw, Shimitar may look to take control early of the race. Whippet Wood has post three in the six-horse field. A son of Yankee Bambino, Whippet Wood will receive the driving services of Buddy Gilmore. He is trained by Virginia Young for the Woodwick Farm. Go Get Lost will start from behind the number five gate with Tom Sells on the bike. Owned by Wayne Lynch and trained by Art Wershing, Go Get Lost is the morning line second choice at three to one. Friendly Face has the five hole in this contest and at 15 to one is the long shot in the field. Trained by Marku Vertinen, driven by Pekka Korpi, Friendly Face is leased by Asa Latinen. And rounding out this field is Mac Lobel. Conditioned in the Chuck Sylvester Stable, the Mystic Park Stallion will be handled by John Campbell. Owned by Lou Guida and the 22-member One More Time Stable, Mac Lobel is the oddsmaker's choice at 4-5. to five. So the stage and the field are set, while the owners, trainers, drivers, and fans anxiously await the start of the 1988 Breeders' Crown Aged Horse and Gelding Trot this Friday, August 5th. John Campbell and Mac Lobel coming home to win it. Mac Lobel. Be Mac Lobel coming home for the money and the time in 150. Mac Lobel of Young Lee Campbell. Mac Lobel is going to get beat. Go get lost. Leads it by two. Mac Lobel striding out with those long and powerful strides. Mac Lobel in the Breeders' Crown, Friday, August 5th. Mac Lobel, and even as a two-year-old, he showed the style of stardom. He was named two-year-old trotter of the year. By November of 87, as a three-year-old, he was the sport's reigning superstar. After winning the Hamiltonian in August, he devastated a strong field in the Breeders' Crown on his way to Horse of the Year honors. Tonight, Mac Lobel tries to become the first horse in history to win three Breeders' Crown events. Saratoga Raceway in Saratoga Springs, New York. It's the Breeders' Crown for Older Trotters. Breeders' Crown 88 is being brought to you by Castleton, a tradition of excellence. By North American Harness Racing Marketing Association. And by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 Olympics. This Bud's for you. Tonight on a warm and somewhat breezy Friday evening in upstate New York, the Breeders' Crown begins its fifth series of championship races. Between now and November the 18th at nine unique and historic North American racetracks, 12 races will be contested and they will no doubt be the decisive battles which will determine the crowning of our champions at year's end. 
Through the next 17 weeks, you'll see the best younger horses and the established stars, male and female, trotters and pacers. Instituted by the Hamiltonian Society, one of harness racing's most prestigious organizations, the Breeders' Crown has a short but rich history. And tonight, one horse, Mac Lobel, has a chance not only to win his third Breeders' Crown event, but to break one record in harness racing that has survived the tests of speed and time. It's the one record that hasn't fallen in almost 20 years. Neville Pride's mile on a half-mile track in 1 minute 56 and 4 fifth seconds. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Johnson. Delighted to welcome you to this quaint and charming resort spa of Saratoga Springs, about three hours and a hundred years from the skyscrapers of Manhattan. And who best to join me on this beautiful evening but my co-host for this series of broadcasts, Stan Bergstein. And Stan, perhaps you can best put this race, this horse, in perspective. Well, as far as the horse, Dave, Mac Lobel fits very well with the previous great champions of the sport. Greyhound, the great gray ghost of the 1930s, a Sumac Lad and Scott Frost in the 1950s, Speedy Scott and Neville Pride himself in the 1960s, and Speedy Crown and Super Bowl in the 1970s. He is, after all, Mac Lobel, the fastest trotter ever in the history of the sport with a mile in one minute, 52 and one-fifth seconds. He has won more money than any other American trotter ever and he is the horse of the year and bidding to become the first horse since Neville Pride mm -hmm. to win more than two a uh, one at uh, horse of the year championships stan is he battling the clock or is he battling other horses tonight well, i don't think he's battling the clock as much because he has to beat a field of horses that includes one that has beaten him this year handed him his only lost and go get lost go get lost beat him at the meadowlands he has to retrieve that victory he also has to beat the horse that beat go get lost the natural image from canada so he's very much has competition as well as the watch and the competition has assembled in the back paddock uh, the assembly area the backstage portion of uh, saratoga raceway and that's where the other broadcast member of our team is standing by kenny rice Thanks, Dave. I'm here at stall number six with Mac Lobel, who is the dream of every horseman and certainly every racing fan. He was sold for $17,000 as a yearling. He is the richest American trotter of all time and reportedly has been syndicated for $6 million. Friendly Face was the top seller of this group as a yearling, selling for $80,000. But the other four did not bring more than $10,000. So there are some bargains here tonight, but all six are racing for the big money in the Breeders' Crown. Dave? And let's take a look at the morning line. In post position order, number one, Natural Image, 12 to 1 with Steve Condren driving. Number two, Shimitar, also at 12 with Dan Ader in the bike. Three is Whippet Wood, Buddy Gilmore the driver, and 8 to 1 in the morning line. Number four is second choice at three to one, Go Get Lost with Tom Sells. Then we have number five, Friendly Face with Pekka Corpy at 10. And the morning line favorite on the outside in the six-horse field, Mac Lobel with John Campbell. The Breeders' Crown is the richest harness race in the history of Saratoga. We'll have the wire-to-wire -wire action when we return after this time. And welcome back to Saratoga. And as we get set for the Breeders' Crown, here's an odds update and a bit of news because, as you see, the number three horse, Whippet Wood, is a late scratch, reducing our field to five. Late scratch with the judges, and Whippet Wood will not compete. Still about in the 80s that the track is lightning fast, and as you see, the bottom horse, Mac Lobel, is the two to five favorite as we watch the horses come out of the paddock and Stan Bergstein has joined me for the post parade. And leading the way is number one, Natural Image. This is Canada's hope in this race. He's won $273,000, not bad for an original $9,000 yearling purchase. And of course, he beat Go Get Lost in Canada. Big, strong, powerful horse and can handle a half mile track. And the driver, Steve Condren, leading driver on the Ontario circuit. He was Horseman of the Year three out of the last four years out there. He's won over 2,100 races. This is his first Breeders' Crown appearance. And the number two horse, Shimitar. He's out of Ohio, and he's probably going to be the first one out from behind the gate. Likes to race in front, has headed Mac Lobel in early races against him this year, but wouldn't, didn't survive it. He was a $1,900 yearling owned by Esther Crown over MacArthur, Ohio, and the trainer, Earl Owings, 10-year-old daughter, Bonnie, rides him. Dan Ader drives. Dan Ader, a popular driver on the Ohio circuit. He comes from a racing family. Both his grandfathers, his father and his uncle all trained and drove horses. Number three, Whippetwood scratched and here is Go Get Lost. 
This horse is the one that has beaten Mac Lobel and the only one who has done it this year. He is a small horse, a little tiger with a big tank and a big heart, and he is a stretch driver. Regardless of where he is early, you'll see him driving in the lane. And that's Tommy Sells now plying his trade on the Maryland circuit. Before that, he was a standout at the Meadows in western Pennsylvania. Go Get Lost, incidentally, won 686,000 life. And there is number five, Friendly Face. Friendly Face is a winner of $251,000. He was the most expensive yearling in the field, $80,000, and he brings in the Scandinavian connection. He's now leased by Issa Latinen of Deerfield Beach, Florida, who incidentally came from Finland and bought Go Get Lost as a yearling and now leases Friendly Face. And there's Pekka Korpi. He and his brother Heike are two of Europe's greatest drivers. Pekka has won almost 2,500 races, including almost every major race in Finland. And here is the star of the evening, Mac Lobel. And prancing a little bit as he comes down here, winner of $2,235,998 up to this point, owned by Louis P. Gaida and now owned by John Eric Magnusson's Blastiga Stud of uh, Sweden. And John Campbell, who's won over 4,000 races, over 351 this year alone. His mounts have earned more than $63 million in purses. He's the leading money-winning driver in the history of the sport. And there is Mac Lobel getting ready for this evening's Breeders' Crown. Six is not a large field. Now we've had the late scratch. We have five. But let's zero in on the main contenders than they have met before. The International Statue of Liberty at the Meadowlands, June 18th, at a mile and an eighth. Mac Lobel, freshly returned from his triumph in the Elite Lop in Stockholm, looked like an easy winner. Until Go Get Lost came charging down through the lane in the final 16th. Relentlessly coming on under Tom Sell's left-handed whipping and getting up to lose by just a nose. A week later, in the Statue of Liberty's second leg, he defeated Mac Lobel. This is the Maple Leaf Classic, 200,000 at Greenwood in Toronto, July 1, and this time Go Get Lost without Mac Lobel in the race is in front. Here, he gets collared from behind as Natural Image, who has drawn the rail in tonight's Breeders' Crown at Saratoga, comes on for Steve Condon to catch Go Get Lost at the wire. And the Nat Ray, named for the driver of the first Hamiltonian winner at the Meadowlands, July 25th. Mac Lobel now with a two-week rest in front once again. And once again, Go Get Lost comes in hot pursuit. This time, fresh and ready, Mac Lobel draws away to a three and three-quarter length triumph over Go Get Lost. Let's take a look at the odds. Natural image at 17 to 1, the longest shot on the board. Shimitar, the early speedball, has a 6 to 1 shot. Whip it wood scratched. Go get lost is the second choice at 7 to 2. Friendly face at 15. And Mac Lobel now down to 1 to 5. You have to put 5 up in order to win 1. If you're in anywhere near Saratoga Springs, New York, even if the horses aren't racing, I guarantee you a beautiful day when you just drive through town. We'll be back after. That's Mac Lobel with John Campbell in the bike warming up for this evening's Breeders' Crown here at Saratoga Harness. And the road to Saratoga has been an interesting and exciting one for the fans of Mac Lobel and for the people who surround this great trotter. The Mac LaBelle story is a team effort. Driver John Campbell, trainer Chuck Sylvester, and caretaker Randy Beekman. And their training camp is here at Gateway Farm in New Jersey, not far from the scene of this triumph. And the others are far back. It's Mac LaBelle, and he's pouring it on. Mac LaBelle in front now by four or five. Napolitano is never going to catch him. The others are far back. Here is a brilliant trotter and a brilliant performance. Mac Lobel has won the Hamiltonian. Exultation, the feeling of true jubilation. Well, naturally, the Hamiltonian was a great thrill. I think any horseman that ever lives wants to win that at least once if they can throughout their livelihood. But many think this was Mac's greatest triumph as a three-year-old. The Breeders' Crown a year ago at Pompano in Florida. 12 and 3 quarter length victory over Napolitano, world record time, 1 minute 54 and 1 fifth second. 
Number eight, Mac Lubell of John D. Campbell. Here in Sweden, at Solvalla, the great track in Stockholm, Europe meets Mac Lubell. Sugar cane, Hanover of Fyra, Napolitano. What the horse, what the driver. Number eight, Mac Lubell of John D. Campbell. Well, everybody asks me what makes him so great. There's a lot of things that make him so great, but Chuck keeps him great. It's, it's very difficult to keep a horse racing for three seasons now at the top of his game against the best there is. You just really can't say enough about anybody that can keep a horse as sharp and on top of a game as long as Mac has been. Stan, what about that victory in Sweden? Was it as big to the folks over there as it is to us? Absolutely, and for a number of reasons. Scandinavia, and particularly Sweden, is very American-oriented as far as the trotters. They've been taking virtually all the good trotters over there, including now, of course, Mac Lobel, who has been purchased three-quarter interest for five million. They wanted him to win that race. The Swedes wanted him to win for two reasons. Sugarcane Hanover was in Norway, and here you can see, after he did win, Sugarcane Hanover in Norway, and they wanted to see him be beaten by an American horse. And here you can see Mac Lobel's ovation as he goes down with Lou Gaida and with John Campbell. Thousands, 31,000 people giving him a tremendous ovation. We'll be back with more, and there's the horse that uh, had him waving their flags in Sweden after these messages. We're back at Saratoga Harness for the Breeders' Crown, and Mac Lobel has plummeted again down to one to five. The folks here at the racetrack really believe he is going to set the record. Nine to one for Natural Image, eight to one for Shimitar, scratch the three horse, go get lost at three and a half, friendly face at 15, and Mac Lobel one to five. Kenny Rice is in the winner's circle. Got a lot of company down there. Oh, and a lot of cheering fans for Mac Lobel right now, Dave. Mac is the heavy favorite. John Campbell says that someone else will set the pace, though, tonight. He is not going after a world record. He says he wants to win the crown for now. Cautiously optimistic, Dave. And there's our live shot of Mac Lobel behind the starting gate, our camera, our wireless camera in the starting gate. And let me tell you, I've just seen something I've never seen before. A skunk has just crossed the track and is about 20 feet from our location at the clubhouse turn. But Mac Lobel doesn't know it. John Campbell doesn't know it. And they're one to five on the tote board as we get set for the start of this one mile historic race. Here's the call from Joe Rickey. Um, Shimitar at the rail is Natural Image. From the outside, Friendly Face. The far outside, Mac Lobel. Field heads into the clubhouse turn the first time. Shimitar up to take the lead of late. Mac Lobel moves the far outside second and comes go get lost between horses third. Natural Image away fourth at the rail. A gap of three lengths to Friendly Face. Straighten up down the backstretch and head toward the corner. Mac Lobel moves on the outside now to take the lead. Shimitar is back to second at the rail. Go get lost third. The opening quarter in 27 and two fails. Field heads into the paddock turn the first time. Mac Lobel and John Campbell enjoy a two length lead. Shimitar at the rail is second. Go get lost right there third. The gap of two lengths to natural image and friendly face has got the best view. Off the turn in front of the grandstand, first time. That's Mac Lobel out there on the front, and he shows the way two lengths. Shimitar stalks the pace setter from second. Go get lost the rail, third. Natural image at the rail, fourth, and friendly face. They're by the half in 57 and one fifth. Field heads into the clubhouse, turn the final time. Mac Lobel has a later length. Shimitar in the pocket is second. Go get lost moves the outside, third. Natural image at the rail, fourth, and friendly face. They go around the turn, straighten up down the back stretch and head for three quarters. Mac Lobel has a lead, two lengths. Hot the rail is Shimitar. Go get lost, moves the outside third. A gap of two lengths to Natural Image and Friendly Face. They head toward three quarters. Mac Lobel with a lead a lane. They're by three quarters. One, 26 and four fifths. They're on a world record pace. Field heads into the paddock, turn the final time. Mac Lobel and John Campbell have the lead a lane. Go get lost, closes it on the outside, second. At the rail, Shimitar, third. And on the outside is Natural Image. Less than a mile to trot, now they turn for home. Mac Lobel all out for the world record. Go get lost, most turn the outside. Mac Lobel on the rail, has the lead. That's Mac Lobel, 10 for the mile, 156 flat. And it is a world, world record. record. Breaking by four-fifths of a second, a record that has stood for 
19 years set by Nevely Pride right here and in the afternoon in this, a quite an accomplishment. Stan Bergstein? You hear the ovation here, and this, of course, completes the cycle. He's the world champion on mile tracks at 152 and a fifth, world champion on five-eighths at 154 and a fifth, the first victory at Springfield, Illinois, this over the mile track, the second at Pompano, Florida, five-eighths mile, and now one minute, 56 seconds, Mac Lobel all conquering and all dominant in this sport of trotting. And there's the light show in the infield. And I turned to Stan after the half in 57 and 1, and I said, will he do it? He said, yes. And of course, it was their plan to win the Breeders' Crown first. And if the world record happened, well, fine. But as we watch the stretch drive, you can see that it is John Campbell with Mac Lobel in full flight. And the Campbell, if you notice early, Shimitar went to the front, and Campbell, who is one of the greatest race drivers in the history of this sport and has won more money than any other, over 64 million purses with his horses, put Shimitar between him and Go Get Lost. Tom Sells gave it a valiant try, and so did Go Get Lost, but he had to come around Shimitar, didn't quite have enough. And Friendly Face is the unofficial third place finisher but the story here is Mac Lobel, another world record in his background. We'll be back with more from Saratoga Harness after these messages. We're back. That's Mac. And let's take a look at the prices, which is now official. Mac Lobel pays 240 to win, 210 to place. There was no show wagering. Go get lost. The second choice, 220 to place. Third was friendly face. Win, place, and exacta wagering. And the exacta with the two favorites, a 6-4 combination, and the comeback, $3.80. To the winner's circle, here's Kenny Rice. Thank you very much, Dave. With me is Don Eric Magnuson, the man who just purchased Mac Lobel recently. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. And with me is the winning trainer, Chuck Sylvester. Congratulations, well, Chuck. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's over, and I'm sure glad he did it. Now, before the race, talking to John Campbell, cautiously optimistic, he said the main thing is to get that third crown for Mac. He said we're going to wait and see on the world record. Did you have an idea going into it, though, that he would go out so quickly? No, and I sure didn't, and I thought John probably wouldn't leave. And I didn't think it would break it tonight, to tell you the truth. So I'm really thrilled. As expected, Shimitar gets out early in this, but by the quarter, it was Mac on top. Is that where you wanted him to be at that time? Well, I was sure glad to see him get there at that time. I tell you the truth, I didn't think they were going that fast. As we take a look here on the back stretch. Yeah, I see him going there now. He got to the front quite easy, and I thought maybe uh, Shimitar just let him go tonight to get a two-hole trip early. And come to find out, they went a real fast quarter. And when they turned in that 57-1 and one at the half, you probably had to entertain some thoughts of a world record. Well, sure, he got him back down pretty good, and I knew he'd, had a, he'd have a fresh horse to finish with after that point. And he looked like a very strong horse all the way in this race, Chuck. Yeah, he sure was. I was really pleased with him. He's been just a little sore for us, but when he hits the track, he's 100% game. There was some speculation after Sweden maybe took a little bit out of him, but he was coming off a big race. Any doubt in your mind coming into this race that he would turn in a big effort, possibly go for that world record? Well, naturally, we were going for the win first. That's what we wanted to do. And, and if a world record comes, I'm sure glad we got it. But we just really wanted to win. And as he turns for home, any question in your mind that he's going to win it? Well, about that point, I knew that the go with loss wasn't going to get by him anymore. Congratulations, Chuck. It has been a great season, a great seasons, really, for Mac Lobel. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Magnuson, right, congratulations, Chuck. Congratulations. Back to you, Dave. Well, let's put this track record into perspective, Stan. Well, it's an amazing accomplishment for several reasons, not only because he broke Neville Pride's record by four-fifths of a second, but this track has been reconditioned now. It has stone dust surface. When Neville Pride went over it, it was a clay surface, which is much faster, but not a good all-weather surface. The new management and Bob Morris, the track superintendent who works for Bill Keo and uh, for Frank Fitzgerald and their associates who have this track now, did a great job putting this racetrack down, getting it into shape. It's a wonderful plant and uh, it's a big, big record. How has the trotting record compared with the pacing record in its fall? Well, it's not as significant in one way. When Neville Pride set the record in 1969, it was the record for a half-mile track for both trotters and pacers. Mm. The record then for a pacer was Brett Hanover's 157. The pacing record has been lowered six seconds since then, which is 30 lengths down to 151. And of course, here you have a horse now that goes in 156. It isn't the pacing mark anymore, but it's amazing for a trotter. I guess one of the reasons that uh, Mac Lobel is so popular is because he's an older horse who has established his fans over the years. Well, he's established him, and of course, at New Trend, normally four-year-olds haven't been racing very much. It's great to see four-year-olds back, and this is the result of four-year-old racing. 
And it's great to uh, see Kenny and his new guest. And a man, Dave, that's very familiar to winner circles in the Breeders' Crown. He has won more money than any driver in the history of this event. Mac Lobel, the winningest horse in terms of money in this event. John Campbell, congratulations. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Now, going into this race, you told me, I guess maybe just an hour ago, that you wanted to win it first and the world record would come second. Were you just putting me on a little bit, or did you have an idea that you were going to send him out that fast? Well, I knew I was going to leave uh, exceptionally fast. Uh, I didn't know I'd have to come home that fast. Go Get Lost was still coming at me halfway through the stretch, and I just had to go that fast to win. He looked like a very strong horse all the way through. Yeah, he raced very well. He, it's, it's extremely good. It's amazing that Chucky can keep him as sharp as he does week after week and race after race. Did you feel pretty comfortable all the way through? Did you know you were on a world record pace at any time? No, I didn't even think about the world record. Uh, after the fast opening quarter, I just wanted to get a, as big a breather as I could through the three quarters. And once he gets a, a breather, he'll still kick home for you. And uh, he, he's just amazing. He's the whole star of the show. Oh, yes, he is. He pulls the hat trick tonight. Thank you very much, John Campbell. Thanks, Kenny. All right. Back to you, Dave. And here's top to bottom, the final order of finish. Mac Lobel, the one to five favorite, came home in world record time. Second choice, go get lost. Pressed him through the stretch, but did not get up to win it, but finished second. Friendly face third, Shimitar fourth, Natural Image finished fifth, and Whippet Wood was third. Will you still remember Neville Pride, though? They'll always remember Neville Pride. They'll remember this horse all over the world for a long time. And we'll be looking for him on the racetrack soon. Thanks very much for joining us. It's been an exciting evening with a big crowd, the biggest of the season so far, and they bet with both hands. They set mutual records at Saratoga Harness tonight and a world record on the racetrack for Mac Lobel. Join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern for Harness Racing's premier attraction, the Hambletonian, a field of 13 set to contest this 63rd edition of the three-year-old summer classic with a purse of over $1 million. And then next Friday, one week from tonight, at 12 midnight, we'll also be at the Meadowlands, and the pacing mares will be center stage as the Breeders' Crown continues. has been brought to you by Pompano Harness, the winter capital of harness racing, and by the Meadowlands, home of the Hambletonians.